All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I'm delighted to be joined by Colin Scotland, who is in Liverpool in the UK. How are you doing, Colin? Hey, doing wonderful. Thank you, John. Yeah, fantastic. Uh, and and Colin is uh, you know runs mastermind groups and and coaching. And you had a before we just start off, you had an interesting experience uh, earlier in your career where you had six months to repay five hundred thousand or lose everything. Oh, cataclysmic experience! You know, one of those that was like people putting their arms around me, almost as though somebody had died. John, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but at the same time, the making of who I am today. So, with hindsight and the passage of time, I can look back fondly on what was a horrendous episode in my life. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's fantastic. That's what we're going to talk about today. Is like a, a transformation or a customer journey of transformation, like really how to understand and identify your ideal uh, client because here's the thing Colin is it is amazing to me today that a lot of a lot of entrepreneurs a lot of businesses whatever is they they don't have a really good definition of who their ideal client is they kind of do or they think they do or sometimes it's too broad sometimes it's too uh you know, it's too ill-defined or whatever, but it still seems to be a problem. And everybody says, well, you know, got to start with your ideal target client. And it seems like a given, but for some reason, it's, it's something that doesn't seem to be done that well by a lot of people. And it can cause a lot of problems for your business, clearly. Definitely, definitely. And I think we, we are all guilty of this. We are all wrapped up in what it is that we do because we care about it so much it, it's very precious to us it's very near and dear to us and so without even realizing it we get focused too much on our side of the equation and can all too often lose sight of that all, the all important part the bit that makes our business tick the client right yeah no i i agree totally i mean i think we get we get very um if, very self-focused. I think the other thing too, is we make a lot of assumptions and, you know, we think we don't, we think they're based on, uh, you know, cause we're really perceptive, but we make a lot of, uh, we make a lot of assumptions that often turn out not to be, not to be the case. So what, what are some, what are some of the ways you can start to really focus in on and identify your, your idea client? So one of the interesting things that I love and encourage my students and client coaching clients to look at is something I call the prison to paradise uh, process, exercise, journey, however you want to describe it. And it's really, really simple. If you imagine that your ideal client, the person that you serve is in a state of prison, a painful state of whatever the problem is that they're dealing with or feeling or having trouble with before they've had your wondrous service product whatever it is that you do and then the antithesis the opposite of that is the paradise state after the fact after they've experienced your wonder and your magic having a look at what those contrasting states are is the beginning of understanding how you deliver transformation because understanding your ideal client isn't always necessarily about what age are they? What sex are they? What job do they do? How much money do they earn? Yes, those things play a part. Of course they do, right? They are part of how we segment a market and create targetable groups of people that we can advertise to. Yes, that's, that's not what I'm talking about here. But the transformation is the thing that's universal across segments, across uh, demographic ranges you know we all have the same finite number of emotions and feelings so how do you how do you ease anxiety with what it is that you do how do you bring confidence where there is fear and doubt and self um self questioning going on with your clients so really drilling into what these things are is the beginning of understanding on a deep emotional level who your ideal client is because yes you can paint a picture hey my ideal client is maggie and maggie has two kids she works a nine-to-five job in corporate america and then on the weekends she loves to do x y and z and then you can go deep into the emotional state of maggie and the emotional state of being before she's 
had or experienced your product or service, the prison state, and then the opposite of that. So after we've worked our magic, what's Maggie's life like now? What does it look like? What does it sound like? And what does it feel like for Maggie? And you can really go into detail like that. And it's that level of detail that makes all of the difference, all of the difference. Yeah, no, I, I, those, are, those are great points. And I think, uh, and I think even at a fundamental one is sometimes we're very good at, at maybe imagining that they're in prison and sort of going on, you know, focusing on, on that and, and then realizing that actually with this particular issue, where well, they're not in prison at all, actually, they're just, it's an annoyance. So the fact of like trying to really focus in on what are the issues that really need solving as opposed to the ones that we assume need solving. 100%. And what we have to appreciate, it, it, it's really helpful to understand the things that drive us, the things that drive us to buy anything. There's always emotions that drive any purchase decision that we make. And let me give you an example, right? So I, I had a client that came to me wanting to add 150k into her business in sales in the next six months. So that we would identify that in the problem state prison state as a problem wouldn't we mm -hmm. right okay yeah. so people that want to make more sales and then i'm like a five-year-old child uh, <laughs> John, in client conversations i'm like yeah. so what why why do you want to make these extra 150k in the next like whatever however many months it was oh well i've just taken on a new member of staff and i'm um, expanding my team i've got bigger expenses i need to get these new products off the ground in a big way um, so that I can like consolidate. Okay, great. Right. So now we've got something different. And then I just keep asking why, right? So why, mm -hmm. why what difference will that make? Why, why the, 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 the leap in what you're doing? And then it comes out that she has a niece with a, a brain tumor and she wants to spend more time with her. And she's got this book burning inside of her that she's longing to get six weeks of the year off to write. So getting the team consolidated leads her the head of the business to have more free time, more mm -hmm. control, more freedom. So now we've gone from 150 K in sales. Hey, I can get you more sales to ha I can give you freedom. I can help bring control over your day and your destiny into your life and business world apart. Right. Aren't they from, from a sales messaging perspective, man? Well, yeah, no, completely. And if you hadn't uh, gone on that uh, journey of discovery, you would have been just stuck back at the, okay, that makes sense. You want to make, you know, you've hired somebody, you want to make some extra money. Okay, let's get on this. Um, but taking it all the way to where there is an emotional attachment to where you get to the real issues and the real, because at the end of the day, let's face it, like we buy outcomes, we don't buy products or services. Mm, definitely, definitely. So yeah. a, a tenet for all of this is just to keep asking why have conversations with the people that are consuming your product or service and ask them why why did you choose this why what might have put you off what would you say to yourself if you were to transport back in time and have a conversation before you decided to do this what would you say now that you've experienced what does that experience feel like now what's the difference that this has made in your life and keep asking those why questions is how you really really uncover the um the clarity around the transformation that you bring when you do that. Wow. Fireworks, man, because then you can transform how you show up in the world, what messages you talk about that little example. We've gone from promising people sales to giving yeah. people control over their lives, right? That's a world of, of difference. And that's going to resonate so much more deeply with our, with our prospects. Yeah. And, and I think the other thing is an interesting one that you raised there as well is that we get very focused in on, uh, you know, as you said, like the, the drivers for, for why this person wants to do it. But we sometimes just stay at a very business level and we don't always uh, we don't always uh, uh, take on board the fact that, yes, there's a business decision here. But there's a personal decision, whether it's one person or 10 people involved in the purchasing decision, each of those has some personal motivation as well as the business motivation. 100%, 100%. And in fact, in those places where there are multiple people, multiple people involved in the decision, boy, it becomes so interesting because then you've got the decision is no longer, if we take that same sales increase, if we're dealing with layers here, then that sales increase isn't about giving that person control and freedom. It's about helping that person to look amazing to their boss, right? Or it could be any number of things in, in, a, in that context. But again, 
there is a re there is that deeper hidden reason you just have to look for it and dig for it a little yeah and I, I think that's one of the things that is often overlooked because let's face it in in, in b2b purchasing um uh, you know, there's a lot at stake often, you know, personally at stake, it can be career enhancing, career limiting, depending on whether you make a good decision or not. And I think sometimes we overlook the amount of pressure and emotion that's on the side of the of the buyer. Yeah, I, I, I think so, too. And I think really fundamentally, it comes down to relationship, right? Mm -hmm. We have to focus on building meaningful relationships with our clients and our prospects. And if we stay surface level, we can never expect to get to those meaningful levels of, of emotional connection. So we, we really have to commit ourselves to the process in order to get the results that we're after. And so if we allow that to happen and we allow us ourselves to create those emotional connections, well, guess what? All of a sudden we look more authentic, more genuine. We have more integrity because we're showing up actually caring about the person who's in front of us. You know, rather than just, hey, I, I want your money and away I go kind of a thing. So it changes the entire dynamic. Yeah, no, no, absolutely. Because let's face it, we're very good at if we hear something early on that sounds like that's uh, that works for us, right? Our product or our service can solve that. We tend to get very focused in on that. And and if you like uh, sort of reduce the conversation, as you know, start to corral the conversation around this. But to your point is, if you have the wherewithal to go further and keep it expansive, you can always come back to those issues, but you may be missing out on, we, we always used to teach back when I was uh, at, uh, at Hathaway, we were doing spin selling, when we uh, consulting with companies on spin selling, it was always that idea of always going deeper because the issue that first permeates to the surface maybe one that they can live with and then you waste all your time focusing in on something that at the end of the day they're you know it's a little irritating but they'll live with it mm, definitely and you really have to un have to uncover that that deeper reason i love uh, stephen covey one of my yeah. all-time favorite like writers authors guy human beings right mm -hmm. and uh, i love how in his book the seven habits he says seek first to understand then be understood and this follows that very same tenet doesn't it to to listen to pay attention to really understand before you jump in wanting them to understand you and what it is that you bring that happens later after the fact yeah and, and what you're talking about here uh Colin, i think it's really interesting and i think good for people to take on board again is that you're talking about having uh, in-depth conversations but really listening it's almost like what you're saying is the investment of time and curiosity is what will win in the end and we live in a world today where everybody is rushing around thinking everything has to be immediate and everything is surface level so you turning up thoughtful curious wanting to dig deeper you know that's got to be a breath of fresh air to to any any customer Oh, absolutely. And you know, it, it doesn't have to be hard or difficult, this, mm -hmm. John. It, has, it can be super easy. I, I do these types of things all the time, and we just have literally a 15-minute conversation on Zoom. I do this with my coaching clients, clients, yeah. right? If you've got clients, just set up a 15-minute session. Say, hey, I'd love just to have an informal chat with you about our service and how you found it and what's great, what's good about it for you, what, you know, and just let the conversation unfold. Hey, John, so the Sales Pop podcast, where did that begin? Tell me, tell me how it started, right? And just, and then hold space and allow the person to, um, to share, to, to f just unfold the reasons for them, for that individual without your input, because it's not about yeah. you. Remember, it's about them and just keep asking that why question and allowing it to go deeper and deeper and deeper until they start repeating themselves, right? And then you have yeah. um, you have such wonderful, I've lost count of the number of wonderful things that have fallen out of those very simple, very light conversations, super easy to do. Yeah, and, and what's what's great about that too, Colin, is, is I'm sure when you're talking to these people, I think sometimes they probably haven't thought about it, what you just asked them. They probably haven't thought deeply about it in a while, right? They probably haven't been asked that question in a while. So you're actually allowing them, giving them space to actually go go through a process of remember and rem remembering, reinforcing, you know, why they're doing things in the first place. And, and probably 
as we said, I mean, you are having this conversation. We're giving them a, a chance to talk. They probably haven't had an opportunity just to talk like that with somebody third party, you know, in a long time, if ever. Right. So, again, you're providing another outlet that they normally wouldn't have. Mm, absolutely. Absolutely. So if these guys are your clients, for example, and we're doing client research interviews, mm -hmm. then you have an opportunity there, don't you, to solidify the relationship that you have with those guys? Because the the best way to grow any business is to do more business sure. with the people that you already do business with, right? Or the, the quickest, easiest path to that. So increasing the frequency of purchase, increasing the, the number and amount of, of sales that you do with the people that buy from you. This is another, you're dead right. This is another way of solidifying that relationship, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. And and but and part of it is exactly as you were saying, Colin, is just the listening skills. And I do think listening skills have, uh, as we all know, I mean, listening skills have diminished a lot over the years and um, and people are, are so distracted all the time that they don't listen very well. So one of the things is creating that listening environment and teaching yourself and, and really asking yourself, am I listening or am I thinking of something else or am I just thinking of what I'm going to say or am I truly listening to the other person? And obviously, as you said, with your why questions, they're kind of validation, clarification questions. You're making sure that you're understanding. Yeah. And, you know, when I listen back to the recordings of when I when I first started doing these types of interviews, I used to almost be like, pinching myself thinking like what are you doing Colin you're just speaking <laughs> far too much right mm -hmm. so then I would go into the next batch of conversations literally biting my lip like just when I would want to say something I would just hold and hold the space because it feels awkward if there's a yeah. silence you know yeah. we, it's very difficult to fill right uh, not to fill and so as the person trying to actively listen that is a skill that you you just have to work on and develop I'm a work in progress right yeah, I know. I think we all are, because as you say, I mean, silence, especially in sales, like silence is a really scary thing. And people often feel the need to jump in and, and fill the silence, the salesperson to jump in and fill the uh, silence. But the reality is you may just have asked them a question that requires them to reflect on before they answer. And so having having the courage to give people space to answer is a huge payoff and and a respect factor. I think they'll be respected for that. Yeah, because, you know, we all long to be seen and to be heard. And so by you holding that space and allowing that silence, that silence, if necessary, for that period of time is what enables that person in front of you to feel seen and to feel heard. And that's really all that you need to do. And off the back of that, you'll have a deeper understanding of what's driving them. You'll have, I call it a word bank, right? So I, my clients, they create word banks of the phrases so that we do six of these interviews and we put all of the words that they use into a spreadsheet and all of a sudden we've got oh i feel like i'm spinning my tires three or three out of the six use that phrase right there's a phrase mm -hmm. that we need now to be thinking about using in our marketing copy so so it it, it just hold, holding the space just has so many benefits for you yeah, no, it's great. And I love that idea of the fact that basically by by talking and by asking good questions and then listening, you're actually the your your customers are giving you your your marketing materials. They're giving you the hook words. They're giving you the things that uh, that are going to resonate with them uh, rather than you trying to just sort of gather together your best ideas and think this is what will resonate with them. They're actually giving to you what will resonate with them. And that, that's the best marketing copy you can ever, ever have. It's like, imagine you're in a room full of people and you hear your name shouted. Mm -hmm. You instantly, yeah. your ears prick and you're like, oh, somebody shouting me, Colin, what? <laughs> Colin, what? Right? So yeah. it's, it works exactly the same as that. By taking the words that they say and mirroring them back, it, it, it has that same, that same effect of them feeling understood and feeling heard. So it leads then to that emotional connection that we were talking about. Yeah, no, absolutely. It doesn't work as well with the name John, because if you hear John started, <laughs> normally like there's about 40 other people will turn around at the same time. <laughs> Everybody stands up, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, well, listen, uh, Colin, this is fantastic. All of Colin's information is going to be below this video and the links. Uh, but before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about yourself and what you do. Okay. Cool. Thank you for the uh, thank you for the space to do that. I appreciate it, John. So I um I I coach 
entrepreneurs, business owners, consultants, coaches on the whole engine of business, right? The marketing engine of business, what we've just been talking about today, identifying ideal clients, figuring out how to get messaging and all of the marketing puzzle of business, right? That, that piece of, of the puzzle, but also the internal work of you, you know, why are you doing this? What's driving you forward? And what the why question, right? The why question mm -hmm. internally, the why question in your business. And I ask a lot of why questions in what I do, whether that's through coaching or masterminds or, or, or whatever. And that, that's me, man. That's me. Yeah, that's fantastic. And I would encourage you to go check it out. Uh, I'm telling you these, these, uh, you know, asking the good questions, giving the space, getting the, getting the feedback, giving people uh, enough room to, to actually talk and expand on their own thinking is a great, is just a great way forward. So thank you for Colin, that, for, Colin, for that. Some great insights. Uh, my name is John Golden. I'll see you all for another interview really soon. Thank you. Yeah.